Lesson 4.4, Solving Multi-Step Problems with Fractions and Mixed Numbers. Sometimes a word problem will involve more than one fraction operation, more than one step. We can use parentheses to group different operations. And according to the order of operations, we perform operations within parentheses first. You should remember the order of operations from the beginning of fifth grade math. We can remember it as PEMDAS. It's parentheses, then exponents. Then we multiply or divide left to right, whichever comes first. Then we add or subtract left to right, whichever comes first. So here we have 10 minus and 1 plus 2 in parentheses. That means we need to do within the parentheses first. That's a 3. That means this is 10 minus 3, which is equal to 7. Here we have a problem with parentheses and a problem with no parentheses. The problem with parentheses, we do 6 plus 4, which is 10. Then we divide it by 2. That's equal to 5. If there are no parentheses, we have to divide first. There's no parentheses. There's no exponents. There's no multiplication. So the next thing in PEMDAS is divide. And we have 4 divided by 2. That's a 2. Now we do 6 plus 2, which is equal to 8. So let's try it with some fraction word problems. We need a half cup of sugar for a cake and 1 and 3 fourths cup sugar for the icing. We have a 1 fourth cup scoop. How many scoops of sugar will we need to make the cake and icing? So we think we need to identify the important information. There's half cup sugar and one and three fourths cup sugar needed in all. We have a one fourth cup scoop. We need to find the number of scoops we need for all the sugar. We can write an expression to fit the problem. We need half cup for the cake, one and three fourths cup of sugar for the icing. This is all the sugar that's needed. We have a one-fourth size scoop. We can divide this sum by one-fourth. Because we need to add these together to get the total amount of sugar, we can put this in parentheses and do one-half plus one and three-fourths. Then, once we have the sum, we can divide it by one-fourth, the amount of the size of the scoop. So the first thing we do is the operation within the parentheses we're going to add. We can add vertically, stacked like this, or we can add horizontally in a sentence like this. Vertical makes it easier to create common denominators to add, though. This is my preference. We can stack 1 half plus 1 and 3 fourths. We need to have common denominators to add them, so this needs to have a 4 as a denominator. And 2 needs to be multiplied by 2 to have 4 as a denominator. And we need to multiply the numerator by the same amount, so that gives us 2 fourths plus 1 and 3 fourths. We add them. 2 plus 3 is 5. That's 5 fourths. We have 1 and 5 fourths, which simplifies to 2 and 1 fourth. If we did it horizontally, we can turn this into a fraction greater than 1. 1 times 4 is 4, plus 3 is 7 fourths. Then we give them a common denominator, and we add 9 fourths, which is equal to 2 and 1 fourth. Either way, we're going to get the same answer. It's just which one do you prefer? Which one does your teacher want you to do? So now that we know it's 2 and 1 fourth cups sugar for the cake and icing, we know we have a 1 fourth cup scoop, we need to divide 2 and 1 fourth by 1 fourth. So we have 9 fourths. We turned it into a fraction greater than 1. Or we can use this if we did it horizontally. We have 9 fourths divided by 1 fourth. So we flip the 1 fourth around to its reciprocal, and then we multiply. And this 4 and this 4 cancel each other out as greatest common factors. So now we have 9 times 1, which is 9, over 1 times 1. That simplifies to 9. That means we need 9 scoops. We'll need nine of those one-fourth cup size scoops for the sugar, for the cake, and icing. Now let's try changing the problem a little. 
we need the half cup of sugar for the cake and one and three fourths cups sugar for the icing. How many cups of sugar do we need to make three cakes? Now we're counting full cups of sugar for three cakes. So we think we need to find how much sugar is needed in all for one cake first, and then we'll need three times that amount for three cakes. And we can write an expression to fit the problem. We add one half plus one and three fourths. That's the sugar for one cake. Once we have this sum, we can multiply it by three to find out how much we need for three cakes. We add it the same way we did the last problem. We get two and one fourth cups for one cake. We multiply two and one fourth times three. We can turn this into a fraction greater than one. Two times four is eight plus one is nine. We have nine fourths. We write this whole number three as a fraction by putting a one as a denominator. Now we have nine times three is 27 over four times one is four. And because four times six is 24, and then we have 25, 26, 27, we have three left over. That means it's six and three fourths cup sugar. So in this problem, we had to add these together to find out how much for one cake. And then we multiplied that by three to find out how much we needed for three cakes. I've got one more example for you, but before we get to that, I want to remind you, you might have seen this if you've watched my fourth grade math or fifth grade math lessons, we can turn a sheet of lined paper sideways to keep place values in their correct column for addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. So that will help you because many errors are because people don't keep their place values in the correct place. So here's our last word problem example. It says Emma and Tala need a total of 12 inches of ribbon for an art project. Emma has six and a half inches and Tala has three fourths that amount. Do they have enough ribbon? Well, it's not telling us an exact number that Tala has. It says that she has three fourths of what Emma has. Tala's ribbon is three fourths the length of Emma's. So first we need to find three fourths of six and a half. And remember, as I've said before, of tells us to multiply. Three fourths of six and a half means three fourths times six and a half. Then we need to add that product to six and a half for a total. So Tala's ribbon is three fourths times six and a half. Once we find this product, we can add it to Emma's length and then we'll get a total. We have three fourths times six times two is 12 plus one is 13. So we have 13 halves. And we don't have any common factors here, so we're just going to multiply straight across. 3 times 13 is 39. 4 times 2 is 8. We have 39 eighths. We simplify this to 4 and 7 eighths. There's 4 eighths in 39 with 7 eighths left over. Now we have 4 and 7 eighths for Tala's length. We add that to Emma's length, 6 and a half. They need a common denominator, so six and a half is going to become six and four eighths. Now we can add them. The numerator seven and the numerator four make eleven eighths. We add the whole numbers. We have ten and eleven eighths. We can get an eight eighths out of this. So we have eleven and three eighths. It says they needed a total of twelve inches. They've got eleven and three eighths inches. So no, they don't have enough. So use common sense and use clue words like of to tell you it's multiplication. Or if it says you need a combined total, then you know you need to add. If it's asking you for a difference, well, difference means subtraction. And make sure that you do within the parentheses first. So now we've completed 4.4. We're going to move on to module 5 and the lesson 5.1 is about dividing whole numbers, and it's split into three parts, 5.1a, b, and c. Have a great day. I hope you'll join me for the next video. Bye.